Let's jump right in instead of uh, being lazy and sitting around and not doing anything. I assume you can all hear me. Now, why am I disconnected from the chat? That's not right. Honestly, this is the worst and clowniest possible way to do a stream manager. I really need to set up a second, a second PC screen. Um, how do I make you reconnect to the chat? Let's try it like this. Someone say something. Anything, anyone, someone say something. Okay, fantastic. That is exactly what I needed to hear, by which I mean see. As, uh, yeah, so here we are in the void. Here we are in the void and everything's fine. This ooky spooky place is slightly ahead of where we left off last time because uh, last, <laughs> last, last time it was time for one of my uh, planned streams. I, I ran in here, realized that trying to stream on the same day I got uh, the COVID vaccine volume two slammed into my arm was, you know, perhaps, perhaps not the day to be streaming. But I'm I'm fine now. Or at least I'm fine with regards to vaccine. I am uh, unwisely. I have I have not bothered to get out of my pajamas today. My pajamas are not very warm, which means that I'm actually I've been sitting around in in freezing weather all day today. Because like a fool, I live in Scotland, and we only get four days of summer. And yet, summer lives on forever in my heart, as I, you know, hopelessly get smashed in the face by a, a pumpkin. But uh, one of the things I've noticed is that my chest gets very painful very quickly if I'm too cold for too long, so I should not have been sitting around in the cold all day. But here we are, I'm now wearing my cool goth hoodie and a whole ass duvet as I sit in front of my computer, pinging arrows fruitlessly at these guys. So, uh, yeah, we should be able to zoom off and go actually do the boss fight shortly. There's a couple of these kind of irritating combat sections here. These are not the fun Dark Souls combats. There are a lot of fun Dark Souls combats, but the ones where there's just about eight guys and you have to take all of them fairly carefully, that's less of a fun combat. If you've been playing all day, generally your like Twitch skills can be high enough that you can just zip through here and, you know, parry, backstab, whatever, your way through this army of bastards. But um, I actually haven't played basically in a week, so I'm not exactly on my on my full, you know, twitch abilities. Fortunately, that doesn't seem to matter for this guy. I hate wizards. Everybody hate wi hates wizards. Wizards suck. They're terrible. They cast spells, and you have to fight them with swords. This um, Conan the Barbarian-esque attitude is one I think we can all embody in our loves lives. Wait, what's that? I'm a sorcerer? No, couldn't possibly be. Couldn't possibly be the case. Yeah, the, the heads look like a lot of things. I'm not sure what exactly the direct, like, physical inspirations for them are. They, they make me think of um, chestnut husks. Or various kinds of vegetable matter like that, you know? In all honesty, they look a bit more like Legend of Zelda enemies than Dark Souls enemies in terms of design uh, design styles. Oh, spooky. So this is one of the more enigmatic bits of the uh, of the Dark Souls, because this is where we discover humanity sprites. These are presumably the human inhabitants of Ulusil who have been so consumed by the darkness that they are no, no longer even pumpkin guys and are... Uh, just pure humanity. These are the humanity sprites that we are crushing to gain humanity as we play through the game periodically from our inventory menu. Which is a weird way to say that, but whatever. Anyway, there's a lot of them and they are quite dangerous. They have no physicality, which means that um, to hurt you, they just touch you. So if you're in their hitbox, it hurts quite a lot, as you can see. 
And uh, the downside of that for me, personally, is that you can't really thrust into them with a thrusting sword, because if you do that, you'll step through them. And that's generally disastrous. They are pretty cute, though. I will give you, I will give you that much. This is supposedly the best farming location for humanity in the entire game, which is understandable, considering it's just these guys. They're just here. Look. Look. I actually think they're really beautifully animated. They're one of my favourite enemies in the game with regards to just the quality of their animation. The sort of, like, odd way there their bodies trail through the air behind them. The sort of floopy, spooky ghost situation. Oh! Okay. Looks like there was a trap and I fell for it. Well, don't you look familiar? I just kind of want to jam my hands up in up in a humanity sprite. Just want to get get in there and have a have a like a like a little a little rustle around, you know. I think they look very they look very soft and probably quite warm. But <laughs> bye. It feels like um, it feels like if they were if they were threatening you, you could just kind of like waft them away like a like an inconspicuous fart, you know. Flap your hands through their airspace until they dissipate quietly. So that cat we saw was Alvina, who we last saw in the future. I don't believe she speaks here, but she does lead you to the location of character that we will recognize when it shows up and um, again this is this kind of weird remixing where Dark Souls previously is intentionally highly highly uh, enigmatic and never really willingly gives you any information at all in this area we've just got Alvina showing up again and doing stuff why is she here we don't know what is she doing we don't know but she does seem invested in some way in uh, allowing the, or preventing rather, the ongoing abyssification of this whole region. Which actually, if you think about it, makes sense. My theory about what she is, that she is this just simply the, the natural spirit of that particular natural area of the... Uh, uh, what is it called? The oh, oh, this is a big one. This is the biggest humanity. Large Larry. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a good outfit. Uh, very efficient for stamina regeneration. What was I saying? Oh, uh, yeah. So Alvina is basically the genius locus of of Dark Root. And since this is in that physical location, it makes sense that she would want to prevent this outbreak of the abyss from doing stuff. But she's not she's not a powerful spirit in her own right. She's kind of just uh, an enigmatic informer who, you know, tells people things. After all, she's one of the only entities in the game world who, who has an army of minions. She's uh, She's got a whole clan of forest protectors. Nobody else does that. You know, um, even even the entities in Anor Londo are almost entirely illusions. But yeah, anyone who's wondering, I'm currently wearing the uh, the black stockings, the gold black robe, the mask of the child. Oh, I'm still using the wrong shield. Okay, that is the Dragon Crest shield, which I switched to for a boss fight. Switch back to the Grass Crest for the maximum stamina regen. And I'm stabbing away with Velka's Rapier, which is one of the stronger sorcerer weapons in the game, since it has scaling with both dexterity, strength, and intelligence. It's pretty rare that you actually get um, weapons with three scalings, and uh, intelligence, faith, and so on are very rare as, as scaling uh, statistics. I feel like I'm missing something down here, but... It's such a pain to explore this place because you can't ever see very much. Oh, sneaky. 
These guys should blend in perfectly. It's very much to their detriment that they have these little white glowing outlines. Perhaps they don't even mean to hurt me. Perhaps they're just seeking a little bit of warmth in this cold world. Perhaps they just want to rub up against me gently. Here in this dark underground room while the, the lights the lights pulse and the music goes mts, mts, mts. I'm drifting. <laughs> so this is the last shortcut. And uh, it actually leads back out over here. This is the this is the, this one. Which means actually I can go talk to Marvelous Chester and ask why the fuck he didn't invade me. Because this guy is uh, so he's supposed to invade you when you when you go into the opening area. Put some spring into your step. <laughs> yeah, that is an interesting it's idea. So it's a shame they don't do that. I wonder if I I do wonder like what their what their deal is, what their connection is. Are they are they the ultimate inhabitants of this area who have completely lost their humanity? Or well, completely become consumed. The opposite, actually. They have everything except the fundamental essence of their humanity stripped away and exist solely as souls now. If, as is revealed in the later games, a, uh, a humanity is a shard of the Dark Soul, then humanity should not be meaningfully different from the other souls that we consume. Everything in the world has a soul, and that soul is has a <laughs> numerical value because video games are like that. But um, you can't use humanity for the things you use souls for, and you can't use souls for the things you use humanity for. Why is the dark soul fundamentally different to the other three? Oh, hello! It's a grave. It's a grave lord servant. Good for him, I guess. Where the hell does Chester invade? I thought it was around here, but. It might be further down, and I just missed it for that reason. If I die, I'll just go back to to dealing with the, the Ulusil Void, but for now, I'm content to lead a... Ouch. Lead a, lead a small army of these guys off cliffs. There he is! Right then, time to not die. which I mean, time to focus a little bit? Uh. Possibly aggroing every single enemy in the upper city was a mistake. On the other hand, it did let me get through here pretty quickly. Where the hell did Chester go? There he is, lurking up at the top there. Chester, I hardly knew her. Ow! Luckily, like many sorcerers in the game, you can interrupt their spell casting and you can chain headshot them, which, as always, the uh, refresh time on someone getting shot in the head is <laughs> enough that they, they can't actually do any of their spells, or indeed dodge. Ouch. So Chester has a crossbow and a shit ton of throwing knives and a, a few nasty habits. We're going to explode him with magic, because that's how we do. In fact, I'm just going to explode this guy with magic as well. Because that's how I do. Time to sprint back up here and hope I don't get blindsided. I think he has the Avalyn crossbow, which is... Uh, no, it's not. Is that the sniper crossbow? One of the only enemies in the game who has a kick attack as well. doesn't help him when I can do big explosions. Is that the sniper crossbow? I can never remember what he has. 9,505. Not tons. Barely worth the effort of fighting him, really. Still, in the interest of completion, I have done this for you guys. Never say I don't do anything for my fans. This thing that you categorically did not ask me to do. Right then, once more into the dark. As we sprint through the empty arena. I wonder what this was even for. It's called, I think it's referred to as a Colosseum, but there's no actual seating in it. There's these galleries up here, but there's no there's no chairs in them, there's no seats. It's just a, a big arena with, with nothing in it. 
So you can conclude, therefore, that it was not actually for any kind of spectator event. Perhaps it had a more ceremonial purpose. Not to sound like an archaeologist presented with something he doesn't understand, but... Um, perhaps it had ritual uses. Perhaps it was involved in mysticism. Oh hi, all you guys are back. Fair enough. So I'm just going to zip through here, which is the, the secret little hole that we discovered Alvina in. Or Alvina ran through, rather. Let's not, um... Let's, let's not comment on Alvina's secret little hole. Oh, I regret saying that. <laughs> that, was, that was too far, that was too much. So, having defeated these, we find... Great Grey Wolf Sif. The student of Artorius, the greatest swordsman who ever lived. So this uh, shield that's dropped is very effective, and it is Artorius's shield. The implicit story here is that... Um, I actually lost viewers for saying that. Oh my god. Uh, <laughs> that's not surprising. Uh, it's interesting to see how how far I can be push people's limits. Uh, no, Sif has not died. Sif was trapped by these guys. They were, they were extracting some kind of existential juices from him, and... Um, Having, having rescued Sif, Sif has used their, their magic to teleport away to safety. We can actually uh, summon Sif in to help with the boss fight now that, we've, now that we've done that, which will be useful shortly. The implicit story that's, that's happened here essentially is that um, Sif, the loyal companion of, uh, of Artorius, and Artorius himself have gone into the Abyss. Whether or not that this this was the first time Artorius went into the Abyss is an interesting thing to think about, because the myths we hear about Artorius in the modern day are that he was the, the only the only goodly knight who, who made a pact with the entities of the Abyss to allow him to traverse it in order to seal away great evil. But is that something he was already doing? Is that something he could already do? Is that why he came here? Because, oh boy, the, the Abyss is here again, time to do some stuff. Or... Was this the first time that happened? Was this, like, the first actual... deal? And if so, it's clear that he did not actually successfully pass through the Abyss. The Abyss infected him, that's why he attacks us. And, um... Yeah, so then the implicit the implicit narrative is that uh, they went in there, it was too much for them, and um, Artorius, attempting to defend Sif, his, his puppy, leaves his great shield, which, is, which provides a protective barrier against the darkness, um, to protect wounded Sif. However, Artorius, without his shield, takes another wound, breaking his arm, and that's why he has a broken arm when we fight him as a boss. And also, presumably, why he left the Abyss without defeating Manus. Whether he realised that he couldn't defeat Manus without access to that, whether he was fleeing to seek help, it's all a mystery, we'll never know. And we aren't really supposed to know. But interestingly, this is... By the way, if anyone's saying anything, I can't see it. My, my chat thing might have broken again. I don't know why I bother with this stupid thing. But the... Uh, what the hell was I talking about? Yeah, the actual boss is down here. So... I'll press on and see if we can find a few more trinkets lying around. Possibly even obtain a little bit more of that good, good dark stuff. The delicious, full sugar rum that is humanity. Unless these things kill me, which they might. It's a good thing I've got enough range on this uh, on this weapon. It's actually potentially worth even just bringing a spear down here for, you know, spear reasons. But yeah, it's interesting that Alvina is the one who shows us where to go to rescue Sif. And I think it's just that Sip, Alvina is well aware that I've uh, got to do something to get this stuff out here, otherwise my whole forest is going to fall into the abyss. 
And I, I don't actually want to become a, a gloopy purple version of myself. Which is not an, not an emotion I can empathise with. I'd be happy to become a gloopy purple version of fuck. So one of the reasons that they're so deadly is that because they're intangible and there's no knock, there's no knockback to their attacks, which means that um, if you stand in them, you just die <laughs> because they hit, 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 hit. I'm actually going to upgrade this fully. I don't really need to um, because Manus himself should be relatively easy with a full a full battery of sorceries. But um, let's do it anyway. Got all this, got all this uh, humanity, might as well use it for something. In fact, when we take the, uh, the various souls from the various godly entities and we get the other three of the four Lord souls, those all look the same. They're bright, glowing souls that have exactly the same colour. I think. Actually, let's- why not check that? How about we actually put a foundation under our beliefs instead of just saying stuff? Yeah, so the Bed of Chaos and Grave Lord Nito, two deities on the same- on the same scale of being as Gwyn. And then the two shards of Gwyn's soul, which he gave away. And that's three. Where's the other one? Oh, right, of course. The other one would be the Dark Soul, which was split into infinite tiny shards, which became humanity. But that's a story for another time. Unlike the tales of uh, noble paladins, etc., which is which is Astora for another time. Haha, -ha, this is a funny pun if you know that in the in the backstory of the game, Astora is a is a very kind of. Uh, religious nation with priests and paladins and things. Anyway, the most important thing about telling a joke is that you immediately explain the joke for anyone who, who didn't get it, or indeed for anyone who did get it. This is this is the key to being a funny a funny internet jokester. Let's just prod this one till he falls off. Bye. If I remember correctly, there's something really curious about the way they made these animations work. I think there's actually something like a couple of invisible NPCs attached to every NPC. One, one, one dictates the current position of the head and the other is the end of the tail as it moves or something like that. Uh, it's, I do not remember off the top of my head, but there's a lot of, there's a lot of weird, interesting, slightly janky tricks that are used in, in game development to make these sort of things work, such as the iconic train hat from uh, Fallout 3. Or it might have been Fallout, um, Fallout New Vegas. Which is where, um, in order to... There, <laughs> there, was no, there was no functional vehicle system in the game, and they couldn't easily make one actually work. So what they did instead was to um, tie the image and, and, and structure of a train to a hat, which is worn by an NPC. And that NPC sprints along underneath the track as you stand in the train. <laughs> and ride in its hat um, because that was easier than programming a, a moving part of a level since NPCs could already move and parts of levels definitely very definitely could not pretty much every game has these fascinating like makeshift clutch solutions to, to those sorts of problems um, more or less depending on how well funded the game is and how desperate they were to get it to get it out on time, but yeah, um, I love one of my one just one of the things I love about the games industry and hearing about the development ga of games and reading about the, the development of, of games is, is finding out about these these bizarre makeshift hacks that they've that they've gone to great lengths to make something work. In fact, there are some very everyday ones that I love that you find in almost every uh, like three D video game. For example. Um, you know, if you have a shopkeeper, that shopkeeper needs an inventory. We don't have a system that allows you to get stuff in and out of an NPC, so instead there is an invisible chest underneath the floor, and everything that that NPC owns exists in that chest, so that you can get stuff out of the chest through the shop interface. Or even just, um, 
like loading timer hacks where it, it you know it takes a lot of processing power to pull stuff in and out of um, of computer memory so very often um, you know you don't have enemies spawning in uh, in uh, it or rather, when an enemy spawns in in a level, he's not actually spawning. What's happening is that he's being teleported into position, having been loaded um, as part of the level somewhere else. What was that? That was weird. Um, so you get these little boxes underneath the level or out of bounds or hidden away in various different places. Just, you know, full of full of guys for you to shoot in, a, in an FPS. Because it would be too, uh, it would be too slow if it actually had to constantly load them in. So it loads them all at the start of the level and just teleports them around. I think I remember. I think I remember one where there was a uh, some kind of um, they needed they needed uh, an enemy to disappear, but there was no way to actually make it disappear. Their their an visuals and animation system had no capacity for an invisible entity, which doesn't quite make sense to me. But apparently is how is the case in that instance. So what they did was. Um, simply make it very very small so as it turns invisible it's actually shrinking until it's so small that it's the size of one pixel on the floor <laughs> at which point it is effectively invisible Ooh, that was close no no hugs thank you i've, I've had enough of hugs I, I would not like any more of your your dry dusty hugs I feel like these guys probably smell like the server room of a of a corporate office in, you know, 2005. Just the smell of like electricity and dust and ouch, that was dangerous. A very warm smell, but also a very kind of parched smell. A kind of fuzzy feeling on your tongue of burning dust floating through the air and static electricity. So this leads down to where we'll fight the boss. There's a very silly cheese strat that you can use to beat this boss, which I believe is what I used back in my Let's Play um, many, many years ago. Seven years ago when I was doing the, the Let's Play on YouTube of this game. And um, I used that strategy then because I was much worse at games. Today I'm going to actually try and fight him properly. And that's quote properly unquote because, uh, let's be real, I am going to be using sorceries. I am going to be exploding things with my mind, which is not proper fighting. There are a few more things for us to grab before we go down there, though. Interestingly, um, this is the only boss fight that has a summon that takes place during the boss fight. When we summon Sif in to help us, it will not be a uh, an external summoning sign, it will be a matter of Finding it within the boss arena. Sif is not massively useful if you have a melee build. However, if you don't have a melee build, Sif is incredible because Sif will uh, distract Manus for a while, which means that you can just blast away and uh, be fine. Because all we really need to do is just land our crystal soul spears and our ordinary soul spears and our crystal other sorceries. All of which together will become highly deleterious to a giant ape creature. I always wonder who the who the knights and heroes and so on whose souls we find are uh, lying around. Is it just some guy? Was that a hero of this place? Was he a hero of Ulusil who attempted to stop things happening, but uh, failed here at the last step? Where is the thing I'm looking for? Here it is. So this silver pendant is incredibly useful. Uh, we'll be potentially using it a bunch in this fight, but not <laughs> uh, no guarantee of that. I might I might kill him quickly enough. It's not necessary. We're also going to switch to the Dusk Crown to boost our magic damage a little bit higher. So that we can absolutely fuck this guy up. Let's just test this real quick. 
So it's an infinite use item, and if you time it right, that boosh thing will uh, re reflect all of the dark missiles that good old Manus here will be shooting at us. Time to beat ass, I guess. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, I know he might look, might not look like a man, but you've got to consider one, biped, two, featherless, checkmate atheists, There's actually uh, an edge to this arena, so we're going to have to be quite careful not to die. And also, I'm going to be fucking quiet now. Well, maybe I won't be quiet. Okay, um, next time, as we jump into the arena, I'm going to shut up and not talk, because I do actually need to focus when fighting bosses sometimes. Horrible jabby sabby chains, uh, pains in my arm and chest don't help. In all honesty, I could do without the eternal, eternal chest problems that COVID has given me. I am really hoping that I slowly heal over long, over the long term, but honestly, uh, I'm worried that I'm just going to have to accept that I am. Uh, severely chronically ill forever now, which which sucks, and I don't want it. See that face? That's how I feel right now. I'm going to do my best to sprint past all these guys. No, thank you. I do not wish to buy, buy hugs. I do not wish to buy dust. I do not wish to buy humanity. I would like to just scurry on, if that's all right with you. Oh no, I'm sorry. I also don't want to buy being being hit with dark sorceries. That's also kind of bad for me. I don't I don't appreciate it. Trot, trot, trot. Step, step, steppy, steppy, trot. Step, trot, step, 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 step trot. So yeah, Manus, pretty tough. Um, if you do have your timings down, he's not so difficult, but he does have some bullshit attacks, which we will be ideally avoiding through the medium of just being a wizard and, and blasting away with soul spears. Do not see Sif's summon sign anywhere. That's, uh, that's the bullshit one. I wonder 
if I'm only allowed to summon Sif in the first fight. I thought that, um, I thought you could summon Sif for every attempt. Do, 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 fighting bosses in the Dark Souls. Oh, of course. Aha. You know, for a split second, I thought you were suggesting, I thought I'd missed half a conversation and you were talking about the, uh, what do you call it? The the thing. The the video game. The Quantic Dream video game that was bad and everybody hated. That had questionable things to say about racism based on some white guy's thoughts about robots. I mean, I don't think you're bad at words. What I suspect is that you said the exact, exact number of uh, amount of information required to... Hey, no, not all Quantic Dream games are bad. After all, Omicron Nomad Soul had, had like, some real weird shit going on in it. Was that this? It was definitely David Cage. It was uh, Omicron Nomad Soul and then um, Indigo Prophecy or Fahrenheit 911, depending on uh, where you're from, I guess. And uh, then a bunch of other terrible games that nobody liked was uh, was heavy rain heavy rain was david cage right didn't have his no it can't have been he didn't they didn't have his weird shit brain system stuff going on but uh no detroit to become human was a game that that was that came out uh, a few years ago that was uh one of these um visual movie interactive movie experiences really um which had had problems. It had problems in its allegories. It was uh, the traditional thing that science fiction writers love to do of making comments on racism by using robots. However, it did so in an incredibly clumsy way and um, also just wasn't very good as a game. And also, I think it had a, a, a robot character, but you know, whose body was that of a white man, say, Say, say some slurs to a black man in order to make a point about how their oppression is the same and it's just like, bro, come on. Optics. Or well, not even optics, just like... Oh, what's the word for, like, short-sightedness? No, I don't know. There's a lot of, there's a lot of criticisms to be made of that game and one of them is, is that stuff I've just been saying. Right, let's try this again and see if we can... See if we can absolutely make those cheeks clap. The Deus Ex reboot? That doesn't have anything to do with David Cage, I don't think. Oh, I oh I see what you mean. You're saying that um the instance of that trope that you remember was when they did it in Deus Ex. I get you, yeah. Reading comprehension. It's easier when you're not being faced down by an enormous horned monkey. Focus time. Yowzer. You know what, I'm starting to think that, um... I'm starting to think that the, the last time I fought Manus and I beat him first try may have been a fluke. <laughs> wow, I'm learning some fascinating things about my, my, my viewer base today. Turns out, you're all horny monster fuckers, who knew? Not me, that's for sure. There is an interesting and distinct connection between Manus and uh I mean, yeah, that's fair. I, I guess I did I did know this already about you all. Um what the fuck was I about to say? I 
can't I can't remember. I said like four words of something and it's gonzo. No idea what I was thinking. Oh wait, yes I do. So um in terms of dark corruption, it's kind of interesting because the dark corruption in, in this area is very much a kind of uh you know, it's it's weird and gloopy and it's not at all like the darkness of the abyss. It's it's purple and sticky and and makes people go all weird and, and pumpkin heady. But 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 Manus himself, the outgrowths on Manus look very similar to the outgrowths on the four kings of New Londo. So if that's the case, perhaps the difference between this abyss and that abyss is that that abyss has had time to metastasize and um, just become this all encompassing subdimension. There's nothing left there. And perhaps Manus is at the start of that process, which is why he's got these big, big tree-like horns coming up out of his head, but aren't, but not the, uh, but the rest of him is like big, weird, gloopy, gloop, gloop. <clears throat> and you can tell I'm not very well because my usual eloquence has been replaced with phrases like big, gloopy, gloop, gloop. Oh, incidentally, this is the this is the spot. See that down there? Those red, red dots. Those are his eyes. Oh, ah. <laughs> you thought you had me there. So, would you guys leave me alone? Jesus Christ. Anyway, down there is the, the, the cheesing spot. So if you stand on that spot, you can hit him with a longbow. It has to be the longbow specifically because it has greater range and possibly even you need to use the feather arrows that also, also increase your range. one's going to be the real tough one. If I can dodge between the dark orbs, they can't hit me. And if I can kill him before he dark orbs, then that's good. Also, if I have the silver pendant ready, I suspect that's what I should try and do. Yeah, I think when he starts casting the big orb spell, I, I'll, if, I, if I prep the pendant then, I'll be alright. I'm just really bad at item switching mid-fight. There's a reason why I almost never have items on my quick bar, and um, yeah, I mean it is basically bullet, bullet hell. If you run away when he starts casting it, you can you can dodge between them a bit more easily. Um, or if you are a melee build, you probably have the hit points and dark resistance from heavier armor to to tank it more more effectively. Um, or you can be using one of the the dark resistant great shields and uh, and tank the hit that way. Unfortunately for me, I am just a little squishy sorcerer. Please, Mr. Manus, please no more hurting. Please stand still so that I can execute you with my with my mind bullets. I guess maybe this is how it feels for everybody else. Every time I've marched into a boss fight and just obliterated them with soul spears, um, th this must be how they are feeling when I do that. So I guess this is my reasonable comeuppance. It's like, God, it was, you know, talking to Solaire later, like, God, it was awful, like, I could, I could barely hit him, he could kill me just basically like that from far away. You know, it was just, I had to, I had to dodge perfectly or it was instant death as he blasted me with, with these spells. It really sucked. 
And Soler's just there nod nodding, like, mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. Yeah, it sucks, doesn't it? Mm. And I'm like, why Soler? What on earth are you talking about? What whatever do you mean? What I'm saying is that sorcerers deserve no sympathy. beans. So if you think you could hold aggro for a sec, that's why you're here. I did actually hit the healing button uh, in an appropriate window there, but the animation didn't happen and I'm not sure why. <sighs> Might be a few more tries. It's okay if I run out of humanity because I won't need it for the next and final boss of the game, so I can just keep doing this, I guess. I'm pretty sure I've beaten all the bosses now, apart from Manus and the final boss. It doesn't it doesn't really surprise me that, that there's fanfic about Dark Souls, because Dark Souls is so beloved. It is one of the most beloved of video games, after all. Um, and I think people who got people who don't normally get into fanfic got into Dark Souls in a potentially fanficy way. You know, I believe that the kind of three-hour lore video explaining all of the little little connections between things that people are perceiving and stating as fact, even though it's completely their own interpretation. Uh, I believe that's the same impulse as the fanfic writing impulse, the desire to further engage with this. And I think possibly fanfic is the step beyond that sort of thing. It's, it's the step where you've, ru you've completely run out of actual canon material to deal with and you, you now have to go invent your own. So in that case, it's not surprising that there is Dark Souls fanfic, um, especially considering people really do love the characters. Like, people love Soler very much. Uh, people love Laurentius, people love all the various characters. Although there were some attempts to 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 expand the, the setting canonically as well. There is actually a Dark Souls comic book, which I attempted to read one issue of and hated. Well, I imagine you could easily write fanfic about Dark Souls that's like, well, how do you deal with... You know, how do you deal with having a divine destiny and also struggling with the despair? I, I, I imagine you could write pretty interesting stories of, you know, drifting between, you know, action sequences of doing doing Dark Souls stuff and then also more subdued sequences as you... Ah, Jesus Christ. As you as you sit back at Firelink Shrine with, with Soler or whoever. Anyway, that's why I am quiet during boss fights. <laughs>
boy, oh boy. Right, I'm going to have a five minute break, I think. Give my lungs a little bit of a rest and also dispose of this duvet, which is now far too warm.
I am back. Thank you for your patience. This time I even remembered to click back to the in-game the in-game view. So hopefully it won't take too many more tries to get this guy done. I I do find myself thinking, you know, if I wasn't severely damaged and chronically ill, I would just be the best at video games. As it is, I'm merely okay. Although every time I say that, people come out with the woodwork to tell me I'm actually quite good. And that they have... Like... Watching me fail at, at beating a boss is still more impressive than them fighting it and stuff. I'm floating around in my brain right now. Um, okay, so let's go fight a guy. Let's go kick a guy's ass. Also, one, what's up with that? Why are there so many Greyfold Servants about today? Is it just that time of year? Is it spooky ghost invasion season? I suppose- oh! It, it is autumn! It is autumn! Maybe it is spooky ghost invasion season. Although, a few days early for, for October. Alright then, let's have another go at this. I say, beginning the corpse run, rather than being at the end of it. Never forget to murder this guy. There's nothing a sorcerer loves more than killing another sorcerer. I don't know if you know much about, like, wizards in fantasy, traditionally, but I am a huge fantasy nerd, and I have a great fondness for wizards and their foibles. And what is the main foible of a wizard? Not being able to stand other goddamn wizards. Why do you think they live in towers by themselves? It's so that they can weave great enchantings and throw them at one another. In fact, the incredibly petty academic is my favourite archetype of wizard. Of which I have several. Because as I said, I'm a huge nerd. That's the weirdest way I've ever said shit, because I tried very hard not to say it. <laughs> I'm not sure why, I don't think anyone cares about me swearing on here. Oh god, what's that? I've knocked something over. Dear oh dear, okay. What do I even have in the old soul bank that might, that might smack him down a little bit? Where's... oh, a tune, there we go. Let's see, um, I'm not using that. I could try bringing my great heavy soul arrows. Those are really dangerous to cast against him because they lock me down. 
The animation time is so long that he can probably smash me to bits. <clears throat> the actual key to beating the uh, boss fights in things like Dark Souls and um, Sekiro, the the twitchier boss fights at any rate, is is relaxation. <clears throat> if you're calm, you'll have a. Mo oh hey, hang on! Didn't he try to invade us and kill us? He's still here though. Quite some nerve, or are you just thick? Fine then. What is it that you need? I'll be seeing you. He's such a dick for no reason. Your travels. He's kind of hilarious to me because he's like a refugee from uh, from Bloodborne, but Bloodborne wouldn't come out for several years after this. And he has that ridiculous little golden dagger strapped to his thigh. An affectation, perhaps. Great Heavy Soul Arrow, <clears throat> I believe does a lot less damage than our Soul Spears, but it'll do more than our ordinary Soul Arrows. The real risk is that the animation will lock us into, into a position for a while, which might get us killed. However, meleeing Manus is a bad idea if you aren't a heavy melee combatant, which we obviously are not. And it also won't do damage more efficiently than just blasting him with Soul Arrows. Um... So I think the, the goal here is to remain mid-range. See what we can achieve. Alright then, let's see if we can slam us Manus. Interesting, it didn't interrupt. And that's the end of him. Uh, I didn't mention this, but I switched up my strategy twofold. I didn't just pick up the uh, I didn't just pick up the great heavy soul arrow to use when I ran out of my soul spears. I figured that in the earlier part of the fight, 
he doesn't actually have a multiple phase like many of the other bosses, so he doesn't uh, become more aggressive later. However, I get more tense later in the fight. Therefore, if I use up the Great Heavy Sword arrows early, while I'm better at dodging, I can blast him to death quickly with my with my higher power spells at the end, and it worked! Suck on that. You, you good? Well, I'm sure she'll be fine. You can't actually rescue her any other any other degree than this. Presumably she just makes her own way out of here. Which is understandable for most Dark Souls NPCs. You know, you generally kind of trust that they can get around um, in their own way without any real difficulty. Uh, she's, you know, presumably wounded and curled up here at the bottom of an abyss, which, you know, we didn't climb down here, we jumped down here. We can teleport out, but can she? Anyway, that is the end of the DLC of this game. That is the end of Artorius the Abyss. Fuck, what? Oh shit, there's two of them. I've never seen this before, what the fuck? Maybe I've just never had- I don't think I've ever had reason to run th through here before. <laughs> They respawn? What the shit? I'm not fighting that. So, uh, I teleported to the wrong bonfire. Oh, do they? Well, maybe I'll try and kill them. But let's let's maybe let's maybe pop some souls first. Let's maybe spend some upgrades. Manus's soul, interestingly, is dark. If you look closely, you can see humanity sprite at the center of it, which perhaps is a more strong indication of this this idea that. Um, that humanity is in fact the souls of of the uh, the guy that I keep mentioning whose name I have fucking forgotten. The furtive pig, pygmy, so easily forgotten, so very easily forgotten. I just forgot his name entirely. All right, time to spend some delicious upgrades. We could be all in dexterity to upgrade the casting speed. I think that's probably what we should go for. We're not, we're not going to get enough intelligence to get the the other spell we have that we that we haven't used yet before the end of the game since we're going to go fight the final boss now which means actually you know all of these i've been saving these souls up to make their weapons but i can't remember the specific sub weapons you need to create first in order to use them so i'm just going to pop all of these you know we've got the velka's rapier that's going to be that's going to be what we'll fight the final boss with anyway oh hey you look you look kind of different Always, always nice to see you, Sigmaia, but you... Did you put on some weight? What's up? What's, what's up? Still, let's see if we can eke out another, another level up out of this. We need, what was it, 45-ish thousand? So that's one more. I can't even remember what you can make with the Guardian Soul. I think you can make a, a spiked whip. Or maybe you get that from the tail cut. Anyway, uh, we were hanging on to the uh, the Soul of the Moonlight Butterfly to make a spear that has magic scaling, but we never ended up actually doing that. We were also hanging on to the Soul of Priscilla in order to make a, a good dagger weapon, because we were using daggers for quite a while. But then we never did that either. And we were also hanging on to Gwendolyn's Soul in order to make her bow, which... Um, we then also did not do, which I believe is a magic scaling bow. Which is interesting because I don't think there are many, I don't think there's any other magic scaling ranged weapons. Apart from, you know, just casting spells. Well, maybe we will actually get enough souls to finish that out. Right. I'm gonna go try and fight these things. And panic slightly. Oh, now you tell me that. <laughs> it's too late now, I'm committing. Bring it on, fuckers. That's gonna miss. On the other hand. I think that's less. I think that's a lot less hit points. <laughs> Oh, 
I don't think I'm gonna fight these ones. These clearly are mini boss versions of the of the uh, the boss. They don't have boss uh, hit point bars. They don't have um, and they have a lot less hit points. As you as you were correct, you were in fact correct. Uh, sanctuary town. Is it still sanctuary or is that where I am? There we go. I wonder if I can actually backtrack through here and attack them from behind. Because that was an ordinary soul spear I hit it with and it knocked off a fifth of his hit points. There's no way the boss... Like, the boss took all of my soul spears to kill us. I think they saw me. Time to leave. So this is the one fight in Dark Souls I'm declaring not worth doing. I cannot be asked to fight two of these things at the same time. It's just... It would take me a lot and I think it would be boring and frustrating, so... Quest reward, please. I have awaited thee. Thou hast rescued Princess Dusk and rid us of that terrible primeval human. Even halting the spread of the abyss, I salute the grandeur of thine enterprise. Please allow me to express my gratitude. I thank thee as do we all. I love to get rewards from a milfy mushroom. And other phrases that make my partner give me really nasty looks across the room. It wasn't a nasty look. It was a it was a horrified look, shall we go with? Yeah, a horrified look from across the room. I believe if you come back here later she's died and there's even more of those mushrooms. But I will keep thy story to myself. This is the best way. For thou art come from a time far ahead. No one will sing thy praises. But yet thy greatness shall live on, for it shall be my purpose to remember all thou hast done for us. May the flames guide thee. The narrative arc of Uglasil is much more ordinary fantasy than... Uh... Wait, why do I have 12 humanity? Did, did Manus drop a ton of humanity? Um... Much more of a, a gener like fantasy story, you know, uh, than Dark Souls is. It doesn't have the en enigma enigmatic stuff of strange things happened in the past and we know tiny things about them. It doesn't have the the distance because you just meet people uh, and the people who have told you things or you've been told about uh, over the course of this narrative and so on. But also it does have this very direct structure as well. You show up, there's a princess in peril um, an appropriate authority tells you to go rescue the princess, you go rescue the princess, and then you are rewarded. Um, it's it's the most fantasy fantasy that, that Dark Souls gets, I think. Also, for anyone watching who doesn't know, which of which there may be one who knows, um, I also do in-depth Let's Plays on YouTube. You can check out my links on my my twitch page go check them out i'm really proud of them they're worth having a look at and you know drop me a a follow here or there or wherever if you enjoy what i do oh my god i've never been clipped before assuming that's a clip of me i don't actually know how clipping works in in uh in twitch because as i said i've never been clipped before for all the for all the people demanded that someone clip that thing i said when we when we were playing uh Resident Evil 8. Well and wide awake. Not treat me like an old withering snake. I do not like you, sir. I do not appreciate your face. I am pleased to see you well. Is it something urgent? Yes, it is. Let's just go. Let's just Ugh, let's get this over with. The beings who possess these I've heard all this before. Very well. Then stay still for a moment. Swallow me down, mouth daddy. I've actually always meant to go through back through my like archived streams and um you know, cut out cut out a few a few good bits to make a channel trailer or something, but uh, there's so much there's so much of it. Like on the other hand, I really would like to have that one clip of me talking about filthy cowboy holes from uh, Resident Evil. I'm just I'm just saying all this stuff and ignoring him because he sucks and I don't like him. Prehensile moustaches, nonwithstanding. C 
So, let's offer up these various Lord Souls. Here we are, having finally attained our, our divine destiny. Off we go to become the replacement for Lord Gwyn to take our rightful place on the throne of the gods. Oh my god, I forgot about Daddy Rough Trade. One of my better phrases, I think. Um, but yeah, so we've, we've marched all the way through from down to the hell at the bottom of the world, all the way to the heaven at the top, following following a mythic arc laid out for us through through propaganda, essentially. What have we learned? We've learned that it is our goal and our ultimate hope to save the world by prolonging the Age of Fire. To do that, to do that, we've been sent through such important and lengthy tasks as to as to grow our soul to become as vast a soul as those of these legendary mythic figures. We have killed and we have maimed and we have stolen and we have murdered. And through that medium we have rendered ourselves on the power of a god. And so here we march through a weird existential hallway, ready to go attain our ultimate destiny. And what do we find? We find dust and ashes. We find the kiln of the first flame. This is one of my favourite locations in Dark Souls. It's just got such a strong sense of menace and of ancient wrongs and of something terrible having happened, but above all of dust and of heat long dissipated. It's really interesting to me to see this kind of... Um, visual research that's clearly been done. You see a lot of, like, melty stuff in games, but you never see, see anything that looks like this. This is a place that looks like it has been melted. Oh, interesting. That doesn't seem good for me. That seems like a bad thing for me. That seems like this guy's going to fucking murder me. Hi. Are we cool? Not, 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 not to be, not to be a problem or anything, but you, you're kind of interrupting my, my soliloquy about the nature of existence in the end of. Oh fuck! Now that, my friends, is a sorcerer. Don't be fooled by the fact that she never once cast a spell. That is the Moonlight Greatsword, which is one of the best sorcerer weapons in the, in the game, provided you also have the strength to wield it. We're actually not going to turn human, because we don't need to be human for this final fight, and since we did not save Soler's life, he will not be available to help us anyway. So the Moonlight Greatsword is the weapon that you get for cutting off Seath's tail, which is an incredibly tedious task, because only the, the last, like, inch of his tail counts um, as tail and the rest of it is all is all body but yeah so there's something deeply mournful about this place um, there's an effort that's gone to it and it's kind of like ashen sterility that is that is unusual in games there's a there's a a deep attention has been paid to to things that have been melted in a terrible way Speaking of getting melted in a terrible way. I'm so glad I learned to parry these guys. So ultimately Dark Souls is a story about being lied to. And it's a story about your ultimate goal being perhaps detrimental to you. Because... 
all the way through, you're told that you're going through these terrible trials. You're overcoming these awful, awful situations. For a greater good, for a greater goal. Both a selfish... A selfish goal of attain power for yourself. Receive your destiny. And uh, a nobler goal. You were told this is what you have to do to save reality. This is what you have to do to prevent the rot from continuing to creep in through through the corners of the world. And every step of the way you were lied to. But the real mastery of Dark Souls is that it lies to you in exactly the way that other games tell you the truth. Everything Dark Souls tells you is something that other games have told you and meant it. In other fantasy games, you do have a divine destiny. You do save the world. Uh, I've broken this guy's AI. I didn't know I could do that. Oh, hi, Mavrinthia. You're here for the very end of Dark Souls. So yeah, the whole way through, you're told these things. You're told you're going to be important. You're going to matter. And every step of the way, you believe them for the simple reason that games always tell you that. And it's always true. The fact that it's so easy to reveal the lies, all you have to do, all, all you have to do, is deface the image of your deity. But it never occurs to you to do that. Nobody ever does that on their first run through Dark Souls. Because they're so used to the arc of this story being, overcome your challenges, meet your god, be given your divine goal, go achieve what it is you, you've been told that is your destiny to achieve. And yet, every step of the way, you're manipulated. The ultimate purpose is to betray you. You are not, in fact, going to be the next god of the world. You are not, in fact, the heir of Gwyn. When they say you are here to replace Gwyn, they mean that very literally. As we will find out momentarily, Gwyn threw himself into the fire. Gwyn burnt up his entire existence. Gwyn turns himself to ash and is left only as a hollow echo of his former self in order to retain his control. His refusal to let the world progress as it should, his refusal to allow things to progress naturally, and his colossal monumental arrogance in so doing. All of that together has resulted in the fallen state of the world. And now you come here, you traverse the white light, and you face Gwyn himself. It would have been amazing if I'd beaten him on the first try there, I think. Sadly, I did not. I'm just pleased that I got the parry. One of the things I love about this boss fight is how mournful it is. As you play through the game, the primary basis of the boss themes are, um, are horror. Most of the bosses in the game have some kind of a intentionally horror-influenced soundscape to their to their musical themes. Some of them instead go for martial valor or bombast, such as, of course, Ornstein and Smell, as you fight in the golden halls of the deities. And some of them express beauty, even. There's a crystalline beauty to Seath's... 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 Seath's fucking hell, that's difficult to say. Seath's theme. There we go. And that of the Moonlight Butterfly, which it's itself is almost a kind of a serene piece of music appropriate to a wildlife documentary. But here, here we get a boss fight that has a theme that is mournful. As we see how the mighty have fallen, how through their own arrogance and hubris, they've destroyed themselves and everything they cared about. And they've done it through 
the relentless need to gain control. The idea that they know better no matter what. If you take the Lord Vessel, but you don't place it the way that the old snake wants you to, and you instead hang on to it, and you hang on to it until you fight the Four Kings, then after the Four Kings boss fight, you can meet an NPC called Darkstalker Karth. Darkstalker Karth's whole deal is that he is or he claims to be a true primordial serpent. What he tells you, and if I get bodied by this thing, that's going to be embarrassing. What he tells you is that um, King Seeker Frampt is a renegade. King Seeker Frampt is far from the only primordial serpent, and that the purpose of the primordial serpents is to ensure that reality occurs as it's supposed to. That the natural life cycle of the universe continues apace. And that Frampt has turned away from their teachings because he, he made a mistake. And he became personal friends with Gwyn. And being friends with Gwyn, wanted Gwyn's Age of Fire to continue wanted Gwyn to continue. And so he uh, contributes and, you know, turns aside and willingly engages. Gwyntinue, yes, very good. Willingly engages with this cruel, cruel manipulation of the world. An endless stream of the undead are told that they are the chosen undead and sent to Lordran, the land of ancient lords, sent away to burn and die, to throw themselves onto the pyre for Gwyn's arrogance. When I first played this game, my conclusion was that the player character, the Chosen Undead, is far from the first Chosen Undead. But this cycle has continued on and on and on. That they've been convinced to throw themselves to, to their deaths in order to prolong this existence. And that that's one of the reasons why the world is so fucked up, because it's been prolonged so far past it. Playing through it again now, you know, ten years after I first played it, I, I don't believe that anymore. I think that the people who say that this is the first iteration of that cycle are right. But that doesn't change the fact that this cycle has been set up purposefully. Cultures have been manipulated and societies have been structured around this idea. Something must be done with the undead. And all of that is in service to this goal to manipulate an undead to the point where they can become as powerful as a deity and then sacrifice that power in service to the prolongation of the Age of Fire. I do believe that this is the first time anyone's actually got far enough here. However, I don't believe you're the first to have walked this path. The other NPCs you find in the game, many of them are walking the same path. The corpses you find that have the starting gear of other player characters, they're walking the same path. The souls of heroes that you pick up as you go along and can pop open for a little bit of power boost, they're all walking the same path. Their ultimate goal was here as well. You're just the first one who made it this far. Divine destiny is nothing. However, in Dark Souls 3, it's very clear 
that the cycle has continued for eons and eons and eons. And all the way down, even far past the existence of any of these entities, these myths and legends still exist and still manipulate people into following this path and thinking that they will achieve some great reward and instead are betrayed. This might take me a few tries, so I'm probably going to stop waxing lyrical about this game, you know, just wanking on endlessly about its, its narrative and the way it beautifully subverts the the traditional path these narratives take, and the way it explicitly uses those part, those trends and tropes of its own genre, its own genre trappings, in order to cause the player to not question. Because you don't question. You progress through the game, and then you reach here, and then you throw yourself into the fire, thinking that that's what you what you should do. And then it's not until later playthroughs that you start to figure out what's really going on. Ironically, that grab attack is one of the best opportunities to get some damage in. It's very easy to dodge. <laughs> uh, unless you are me in this instance. I do think that this game is a, a genuine work of art, especially with the way it interacts with and responds to its own medium. It tells a story that you can only really tell through video games in, well, the way it tells its story can only be done through video games and is critical to the work as itself, as it stands. So I think it deserves its uh, place as one of the genuinely good games that are art. I might start sprinting past these guys at this point. But they're as fast as me, which means that's pretty dangerous, so... I might give up on trying to hit him with soul spears. 
At least not when he's not locked into an animation. He's much more dodgy than most NPCs in the game. And not just because he's lying to you the whole time for his own profit. What Gwyn gets out of the undead is that he gets to have, um... Well, the thing is, the, the undead keep coming back when they die. Which means that they're able to continue to learn and grow and become stronger, even if they fail and die. Which means that they are able to eventually, eventually attain the spiritual significance, the divine magnificence of a deity, which is sufficient fodder to feed this flame. The existence of the undead, it's implied, are a... are a curse. It's not just that the undead are called, you know, uh, the curse of undeath is a thing. It's also that the existence of that curse is itself down to the existential crimes of Gwyn in attempting to prolong existence. We know that when the Witch of Isolith attempted to create a second first flame. This uh, cosmic injustice caused the creation of the Bed of Chaos, which spits forth monsters. Gwyn got that much closer and actually did succeed in prolonging existence. And so, as a symptom of the sickness of reality, humans be begin to become undead. But, you know, Gwyn's children, the gods of Anor Londo, are then able to use that to their advantage. Which is interesting. I love the sound design of these guys, by the way. There's something really, <laughs> something I really like about the howl of a black knight as it dies. It's got an echo to it. Which is fitting, because they are empty. These are hollow suits of armour. Whatever was once inside them has been burnt away to ashes. Right then, let's see if we can manage it this time. Well, He actually has a really wide window for a parry on that jump attack, which is why I keep trying to land it. The problem there was that I was too far away from him physically. His animation finished and he landed ahead of me, and then the hitbox of his attack swing is big enough. That it just, uh, killed me. Well, I mean, the subsequent two attacks killed me, but you get what I mean. I'll do this eventually. I'll do this eventually. The trick, as I've been saying with every boss I've been fighting on this playthrough, is patience. If you pay attention and you watch for the right openings, you can generally you can generally whittle down any boss eventually. Gwyn's no exception. 
His attacks have huge radio, but if you keep your distance, then you can eventually spot the right animations to, to blast him with spells. It's kind of surprising to me that I have failed to get this next Silver Knight to drop off the edge every single time so far. I used to I used to make get him to do it every time. He's quite easy to convince him to step across the, the, the little gap at the center and then he just plummets to his death, re-death, destruction. What is death when you're an empty hollow suit of armor? I do wish that this had less of a long corpse run. It is it is one of the longer boss runs in the game. Um, not least because most of them you can you can dodge around the opponents, whereas these guys they're fast and dangerous. So you do actually need to wipe them out. I think one time I reached this stage of the game and um, uh, it took me something like ten tries to beat the boss, but then. As a part of that, I actually managed to grab my bloodstain every time, which I meant I had uh, 100,000 extra souls because I, of the uh, 10,000 you get for killing all of these guys over and over. Uh, which, you know, I then had nothing to spend it on because, you know, final boss and all. But hey, New Game Plus is a thing, even though I never really do New Game Plus. See, if you can land that, it's a really good idea too, because as you can see, it knocks off a third of his health or a quarter of his health. Unlike most of the boss fights in the game, it is a tougher fight for sorcerers. Uh, simply because he's so fast and so aggressive and so good at dodging. One thing I might try is switching to some slightly more resistant gear. Where is... let's grab the Mask of the Child for stamina regen. Let's switch this to the fire resistance ring, because he does a lot of his damage as fire damage. Let's get rid of that. Um, I could probably equip some heavier armor at this stage, but I'm not gonna. Might be worth switching to the dragon crest, crest shield though. We'll lose out on some stamina regen, but we'll gain in uh, fire resistance. I think the parry window on this shield might be slower. The downside to streaming over doing YouTube Let's Plays is that can't edit out all of the failed attempts to beat a boss. And eventually I do run out of things to say. I feel like going on any further about the all the stuff I've said already would be just gilding the lily, really. Um, I mean, there are a lot more things to say, but not really any more things that need to be said. So it really is just run, stab, run, stab, run, stab, die. Run, stab, run, stab, run, stab, die. Run, stab, run, stab, pick up item, run, stab, die. I have a pun voice? But that's the thing, you know, you're, you're getting too used to, to what you think you can can know about, about how I do stuff. you got to bear in mind I'm pun predictable.
really irritating thing is that um, I don't like to not be talking. I actually really, I, I do just prefer to keep talking while I'm streaming. Having to, having to be quiet so as not to die from from guys is a bit of a, a bit of a pain, really. The main difficulty while fighting him is that you have very, very, very few windows to heal. One of the only opportunities is his, um, is his grab attack. Almost everything else, there's not enough time to heal in between him uh, starting animation. I mean, yeah, but on the other hand, it is, it is uh, a sword made of fire, so... You can occasionally get him get him to uh, not hit properly by being on the other side of a rock, which is why I was hiding behind the rock. Fun little fun little hint for anyone out there trying to beat this themselves. But uh, it doesn't always work because you know his attacks will just go through. The main the the main thing is that his pathing can get stuck on it for a moment, which will give it. I don't actually know if he's fire resistant, um, but I'm a sorcerer. We don't we don't deal with fire. We do we do sorcery. We don't do pyromancy. I vaguely remember something about him being weak to something he shouldn't be weak to. Logically, he's either weak to fire or weak to lightning, but I don't recall which. The problem with getting five parries in a row is that I need him to actually do the jumping attack again, um, and every time that's been my tactic, he's just refused to do it. <laughs> best titanite chunk farming location in the game in my opinion. Um, if you have a particular need for chunks, this is where you get them. Some people like the dark wraiths for that, but uh, I think these guys are actually more efficient. Oof, I'm getting really warm in here. Considering that I've, I was feeling so sick earlier because I've been cold all day and that apparently fucks up my lungs now. Ugh. Too warm. No more goth hoodie for now. Oh, that's a lot better. to grab all the items even if I'll never use them. But yeah, the window on that jumping attack to parry is huge. I don't think any of his other attacks are parryable. Oh, that's a dirty trick.
Well, maybe I'll try parrying the other attacks next. I think he's rapidly actually becoming the, the toughest to fight so far. I feel like I've died more times on him than anything else we've fought in this run. Which is at least partially because because he is a swordsman rather than a, a giant enemy. Um, you know, dragons, monsters, giant stuff. It's way easier to fight in Dark Souls if you're a sorcerer because you can just hurl sorceries at it until it dies. Whereas this guy... He's dodgy. This guy's real agile. People um, played without the without the shield entirely because you need a shield to parry with. Or do you just mean they didn't raise it? Because generally speaking, I try to leave my shield lowered unless I'm about to take a hit anyway. But I maybe have gotten into bad habits in the final sections of this game. Genuinely, I did not think you could parry empty-handed. I thought you had to have a shield. Uh, or a, I think there's a parrying dagger in the game. This is doing the same thing over and over and over and expecting a different result. So is parrying with a parrying dagger better, or, or faster, I guess, than parrying with a um, a parrying shield? Because I thought like, using the Taj or the or the buckler was like the best option. Me again. I really thought we'd finish the game today. It's gonna be awkward if the next stream is just um just all Gwyn. Come on down to SCA.107.2 where it's all Gwyn all the time. And coming up next, after this advertisement break, we'll be having... That's right, it's another attempt to beat Gwyn at Dark Souls. Just to be clear, there are no ad breaks. If you see ads on Twitch, that's nothing to do with me. I have actually hit affiliate now, which is fun, but I'm not going to sign any kind of deal with them. The, the, the default thing that they offer everybody who hits 50 subscribers, because, frankly, um, it's just... It's basically as bad of a deal as if I didn't, and also they then get all the profits from everything anyway, so I don't think there's any point uh, actually actually signing any of the Twitch deals unless you are actually getting audiences of thousands already. And I hate adver ads. I just hate the advertising industry, and I hate advertising as a as a system. So frankly. I would rather not agree to take 5% of the revenue of the ads on my channel that they're presumably putting on there already anyway, because that's what they do. I would, in fact, rather uh, not do any of that stuff. The same with Twitch subscriptions and so on. Like, almost all of the money goes to Twitch, so... I'd rather people subscribe to me on Patreon. I'd rather one person subscribe to me, to me on Patreon than, like, five on Twitch. 
Although I suppose, I think it factors into your discoverability, because algorithms. God, I hate algorithms. Ooh, I know that as a robot, I probably shouldn't be angry about algorithms. Well, yeah, affiliate is what I have the option to become now. I think partners get a better deal, but you don't get a partner until ages later. If you, if you have 50, sub, uh, 50 followers or whatever, you can become an affiliate and get some of the revenue sharing. I could sign up for that today. I'm not gonna, because I have exactly 50 followers and all of the reasons I've just said already. But yes, as a robot, I should probably be more open to the idea of algorithms and not hate them quite so much. However, robots... Uh, wait, no, hang on. <laughs> However, algorithms can, you know, like, just suck the farts out of my asshole, frankly. I hate what the internet's become. You know what, Gwyn? You can do that too. Come on. Come on, big boy. Let's be having you. Cheese strats, by the way. Unless he kills me again, in which case it wasn't cheese strat, it was legitimate. That's not what I meant to do, fucking hell. You know, I definitely think the uh, the old auto-targeting spells might be where it's at. Provided I don't just, you know, beef it and heal when I should have dodged. Pressing the wrong button, like my mother trying to play a game. On the one hand, it's a bit cheesy. On the other hand, it's not a cheese strat. Cheese strat because it doesn't guarantee that you'll win, um, and it doesn't like. It's not kind of breaking, breaking the game, getting things trapped on scenery, attacking them from outside of the arena, you know, which is what you can do with Manus, um, and it's also what you can do with the Capra Demon. <laughs> I will never get tired of the fact that you can beat Capra Demon by throwing dung pies over the wall he's standing behind, until he gets poisoned and dies. Wait, hang on. Which... the what? Is, is there a guaranteed cheese strat for Gwyn that I don't know about? Or do you just mean using the uh, the homing crystals to, to blast him to bits? I've beaten every boss in this run so far, fairly. What you can do with Manus is there's a specific um, little outcropping on the entrance to his arena where you can just about see his eyes in the darkness, like, far, far, far below. If you equip a longbow and I think also the, the feather arrows to get um, extra distance and you shoot him with about 400 arrows from there, you can kill him that way. Bye! But yeah, um, if, you, if you stand on that specific outcropping and equip yourself with a specific... Uh, with, a, with a specific loadout, you can actually shoot him from outside of the boss arena. Uh, I believe the optimal tactic is to leave him with like two hit points, then start the fight and hit him once, because I think he doesn't drop something if you do it that way. Like he doesn't, you don't get the humanity, maybe. But I might be misremembering. I always miss this one. That jump attack hits so late, I always miss the parry. I do have to stop to recast it, but the thing is, it's casting animation is actually pretty fast, um, and Gwyn himself is vulnerable enough to magic that he's taking enough damage from it that I can probably kill him with it. But the, the most important advantage is that I can cast it while I'm behind a rock or whatever, and he cannot dodge it. The problem with using my other sorceries is that um, he's very able to dodge out of the way of them, whereas homing Crystal Soul Mass, he's usually close enough to me that it just blasts him away and, I, and he doesn't get out of the way in time. Oh hey, I got him before he hit me that time.
See how much damage I'm doing. Got to factor in the stagger as well. See? And that's why we don't usually use cheese strats, because you can just uh, win pretty easily. <laughs> I wanted to fight you fair. You are a worthy adversary, but in the end, it's been two hours and I want to go to bed. Bon Damn, really? Bonfire ahead? Shit, I would never have known. Well, we tried so hard and we came so far, but in the end, it didn't even matter. The thing is, getting hit five times is enough to stat- uh, Well, no, sorry, getting hit five- seven-ish, I think, times is enough to stagger him. So the fact that the homing crystals hit four to uh, five times per cast means that you can uh, chain stagger him relatively easily, provided you can keep casting the spell. Um, and it does enough damage to him that it's, it's not really an issue. So, as I was saying, like, half an hour ago, you march in here full of, full of divine responsibility and you think, Gwyn, not sure why you were hollow, not sure why I had to kill you, but here I am, ready to, ready to ascend to your place, to take the throne of the gods and become, become the heir of Gwyn, to take, to take his place. Not really realising that we are literally taking his place. And there it is, Dark Souls. One of the greatest games of all time. Successfully beaten by me, without any real difficulty. I've always said that Dark Souls is a game that um, isn't, isn't unfair. It has a reputation for being extremely difficult, but ultimately it does boil down to being unforgiving rather than, rather than unfair. But yeah, so, you've reached the end of this game and you find yourself wondering... Why did it- why did it end- end like that, exactly? That was a- a strange- a strange thing to happen. I thought I was supposed to- supposed to take Gwyn's place. They- they- the way they said that implied that I would- I would be the new king of the gods. And then you just burn away to nothing. Your- your radiant soul becoming just fuel for the- the further sustenance of this exploitative, abusive system which exists to encourage people like you to throw themselves into the fire. This ultimately corrupt cycle of existence. I think I am going to skip the credits on this one, just because I've seen them many, many times. And also, um, hey, I'm still recovering from COVID. It kind of hurts if I talk for more than two hours, so as much as I don't want to, I am going to just, just end these credits now. It is a beautiful and very sad and very intentionally beautiful and sad ending. It's very... I was going to call it bittersweet, but it's ultimately tragic. Maybe I'll just let them run anyway. I do, I do, I do feel a kind of a sense of catharsis, since I never did finish my, my old... Let's play on YouTube. Here I have finally, finally actually finished Dark Souls in a way that will be preserved on YouTube for people to see. It won't be the same as if I had just actually finished it way back then, seven years ago. But you know what? I'm glad I'm done with it.
I do believe that Dark Souls as a series would have would have been healthier if it had continued in this in this trend of um, having self-contained games that reference reference one another and have re reoccurring themes and potentially even reoccurring characters, but without without the idea that they directly lead into one another, as I've mentioned many times, of course, over the course of these streams. Demon's Souls, Dark Souls. Dark Souls 2 all feel like separate experiences, sharing some themes and, and discussing the same themes in different ways, and sharing each of their own unique sets of themes as well. But unfortunately, gamers are going to be gamers, and they're all going to insist that everything connects to everything else, and every, every tiny shred of narrative must mean something literal. I've always, I've always, I, the one soapbox I keep climbing back up, up on again, whenever I, whenever I'm streaming, whenever I'm making Let's Plays, I, I, it's, I kind of make it feel, kind of feel like it makes me sound like I don't think interpretation is a good idea or that caring a lot about something is, is acceptable. And actually that's the opposite because I do this too. I find myself thinking, ah, oh, interesting, this, this connects to that. And this piece of information means this about that other thing. I don't hate interpretation and explanation. I just hate when those things exist only in service to dogmatic literalism. Just the idea that it is phys physical, logistical truth that matters. You know, who did what, to whom, when, exactly. With no no opening for metaphor or allegory or, or themes or even characters acting on those trends. And of course, the strongest theme of this game of this narrative is circularity. Yes, indeed. The dark sign brands the undead. And so we finish where we started. And in this land, the undead are corralled and led to the north. Where they are locked away to await the end of the world. This is your fate. I've always liked the implication that every time you run through a game of New Game Plus, that's another cycle of this cycle of existence, that's another iteration, that's another chosen undead walking the same path later. The Gwyn you fight at the end of that one's game was the character you played in the previous one. And as always, you're stuck, always, in the endless cycle of existence. So. That is going to be all from me for today. That is going to be the end of Dark Souls. I hope you enjoyed these streams. I very much enjoyed streaming it for you. Make sure you check out my YouTube channel if you haven't already. And um, thank you so much to my Patreons. You can support me on Patreon or Ko-fi if you want, if you like what I do. Um, and please do drop me a follow. Drop me, give me likes, especially give me shares. It means so much to me every time people people recommend my channel to someone else. And I do love to grow my audience like a little garden. And above all, thank you all for watching. Thank you so much. That is all from me. Good night.